will stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. applies to the town board to order for July 7, 2014. Roll call, please. Tony Bassett? Here. Thomas Wick? Here. Martin Manick? Here. Driver in the Here. James Coffee? Here. Rick Collins. Resolution 218, approving the minutes of the previous meeting. <coughs> Resolve that the minutes of June 16th and June 23rd, 2014 be approved and the reading of the minutes be dispensed. A motion. So Mr. Renna, second Mr. Wood. Any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Martin Manning? Yes. Ryan Renovet? Yes. Yes, resolution carries. Resolution 219, abstract. <clears throat> Resolved that the abstract of plot of the claims number 7A14, <clears throat> 1113 through 1246. For $585,751.68, an abstract, <coughs> excuse me, abstract 7A 14, 229 to 250 prepaid in the amount of $520,711.10, be received as reviewed by the Audit Committee and the Supervisors hereby authorized to pay said abstract. Motion to move. Mr. Reddick, second Mr. Wood. Any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Driver in that? Yes. Yes, resolution carries. We do have a public hearing coming up. I think we can get another resolution in prior to that. Resolution 220, Cernak School Bus Lease Agreement for Town Plattsburgh <coughs> Recreation Programs 2014 through 2015. Whereas the Town of Plattsburgh Recreation Programs provide opportunities for youth during the summer to participate in a number of programs throughout the municipality. Whereas transportation in a rural community will often prevent town youth from participating in recreation programs. And whereas the Saranac Central School District is willing to enter into an agreement with the Town of Plattsburgh to provide buses for summer youth programs. Therefore, it be resolved that the Town Board is hereby approved the school bus lease agreement between Cernak Central School District as the leaser and the Town of Plattsburgh as the leasee to lease buses for the youth recreational purposes commencing on the first day of July 2014 and ending on the 31st day of June 2015 for buses described in said lease subject to rental of no consideration but subject to the terms and considered conditions set forth and said lease. And it is further resolved that after review and approval by the town attorney, the supervisor is hereby authorized to execute said lease for the town of Plattsburgh, and he is directed to obtain and initiate compliance of all other terms and provisions of said lease agreement at the rate of $3.02 per mile. And it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the finance manager Recreation Director, Saranac School District, and Pool and Joy. have a motion. So moved. Mr. Manick, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Jordan Manick? Yes. Yes, resolution carries. At this time, I would like to uh, go to our public hearing this evening, and I would ask for a motion to open the hearing. So moved. Mr. Renadet, second on that. Mr. Wood, any discussion? You get a roll call to open the hearing. Uh, Thomas Wood? Yes. <clears throat> Martin Manick? Yes. Director Renadet? Yes. Yes. Uh, this will begin at 7 p.m. Um, this is concerning the local law in relation to peddling, soliciting, and transient retail merchants. Uh, this is a second hearing. I'm not going to go into any more detail at this time. Is uh, there anyone that has any written submissions for the 
the board. If not, I'd ask if there's anyone who has any comments or questions that they'd like to make at this time. If not, I'll leave the hearing open for a bit longer. And we will continue with Resolution 221, Tennis Court Resurfacing and Repainting for Cumberland Head Everest Rabbit Recreation Park. Excuse me. We're asked that the Park and Recreation Department is responsible for the maintenance of eight sets of tennis courts in the town of Boston. <coughs> Where it is maintained the value of said courts, the department must maintain the tennis courts on a maintenance schedule. And whereas Mr. Pyatt has obtained written formal quotes for the purpose of tennis court resurfacing and painting that were received and reviewed by Mr. Pyatt. Therefore, it be resolved that the town board is hereby authorized the resurfacing, cleaning, and repainting of the tennis court by Vermont Tennis Court Resurfacing, Post Office Box 6, St. Johnsbury, Vermont, 05819, in the amount of $14,114. And it be further resolved that supervisors hereby authorized to sign all and any related documents relative to the resurfacing and repainting to Everest Revenue Park to be made payable from the field maintenance account. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the finance manager and a copy given to Mr. Fayette, Youth Service and Recreation Director. Motion. So moved. Mr. Manning, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Gerard Rinsdale? Yes. Uh, yes, resolution carries. <coughs> resolution 222, Park Base Sewer Lining Capital Project Closure. Whereas the capital project titled Park Base Sewer Lining Capital Project was approved by the board resolution 13 213 on July 15, 2013, and said project has been completed. And whereas it is determined that all project invoices have been paid in full, and there remains $29,055.22 in the capital fund project. And whereas the project was funded with funds from Park Sewer Fund, therefore be resolved that the town board is hereby authorized a closure of the Park Base Sewer Lining Capital Project and reimbursement of the project funds balance to the Park Sewer Fund in the amount of $29,055.22 plus accrued interest. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the Water and Wastewater Director and to the Finance Manager. Have a motion. So moved. Mr. Manning, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? Uh, are there other, other lines out there that will be need to be lined? <coughs> I, think, I think it's safe to say there are a lot of lines that I'm need just, to be lined. I'm just wondering why we're closing it out if we think that there's going to be more work to be done out there. I, I can't answer for the director or our finance manager, but I think it's a lot cleaner if that particular project's done. You put that money back in the capital, then when another project opens, depending on the funding sources, they'll open another account and move that over. It's a lot cleaner in audit purposes. Okay. Uh, and it, it, I think it's still for the same purpose, Jerry. We're still working on it. Right. Like, I know there was, there, when I was on the, the committee, there was a lot of a lot of deficiencies out there. I just didn't know if it would if it would make more sense to leave that account open. Uh, but now I can understand with twenty nine thousand dollars. It it's a lot of money to leave yeah. in there, and you don't know what else comes up. And, and it's just a lot cleaner. You you, you open a project, you finish it, you close it, okay. any fund balance, you put it back. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood. Yes. Mark Mann. Yes. Yes. Mark yes. Resolution carries. Resolution 223, 3% site plan return deposit for Dallas Auto Group expansion site plan 2013. Whereas the Town of Plattsburgh Planning Board has reviewed and approved all requirements of Dell Auto Group IOTA site plan 2013. Whereas the Dell Auto Group IOTA site plan 2013 has on file the Town of Plattsburgh a 3% deposit for construction of their project in the original amount of $500 plus accrued interest. Whereas the planning department has coordinated, coordinated inspections of said project and reports all requirements have been met and completed. Whereas Dell Auto Group Toyota Site Plan 2013 has requested in a letter that the 3% deposit in the amount of $500 plus accrued interest to date be returned. Now therefore be resolved, the supervisor is hereby authorized and directed 
the release of said deposit in the amount of $500 plus accrued interest to date. And it be further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be forwarded by the Planning Department Secretary with the return of the deposit to Michael Delabella. Motion. So moved. Mr. Renner, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? This certified copy is to be forwarded by the Planning Department Secretary. She's the one who actually follows through on this and gets to check out. But we don't need to have that go to anyone else besides uh, Michael Delabella. Um, no, uh, that would be sufficient. That's the way we've done it for a while. Oh, I thought it always went to the finance. I, anything with dollars, I usually put his name on, but these have gone to uh, the secretary and she follows through. Right. Uh, any other discussion? Work on. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Mann? Yes. Yes. Yes, resolution carries. Resolution 224, Champlain Park Water Capital Project Closure. Whereas the capital project titled Champlain Water Park, Champlain Water Project, opened in 1991 and all work has been completed. Whereas the water fund continues to pay a debt service related to the project and the Champlain Water Capital Project Fund contains a cash balance of $6,507.59. Therefore, be resolved that the town board is hereby authorized the closure of the Champlain Water Park Capital Project and transfer of the $6,507.59 plus accrued interest to date to the water fund. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the finance manager and the wage water director. Have a motion. So moved. Mr. Renner, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? I have a question in the past. If we are if we have a cash balance and we are continuing to pay a debt service and the debt service isn't identified in this resolution, um, why would we use why would we use some of the cash balance to pay down the debt service? Um, I don't have an answer to that given that this was uh, has been open for quite some time, it may have been a wise way to manage that balance, to put it toward the uh, debt at this point. Um, I'm guessing uh, Mr. Stoddard, uh, finance manager, have uh, decided it would be better just to close that account, put the money in the uh, account where the debt service is being paid from. So I, I, hate, I hate to make assumptions, Marty, but I think what happened here was when the districts were consolidated, all of the debt became the debt of the consolidated district. And we have in the past had other water districts that had entities that were there. And we never did a formal closure of those accounts, putting the capital back into the consolidated district. So I'm guessing this is another one of those. And again, it's, it's an assumption on my part. But I would, I would say that what we're doing is we're cleaning up uh, an account that is, has been labeled for years and years with the consolidate, where the debt being assumed by a consolidated district. Well, one of the things uh, the finance manager has done over the last few months is try to close accounts that were mm -hmm. no longer needed to be open. It creates mm -hmm. a lot of extra uh, work. Uh, the auditors, the last couple of years, I think, recommended we close accounts uh, that were still open for projects that had been completed uh, and, and pulling those funds in. There would seem to have been some logic to uh, put the fund balance toward the balance of the project. Now, if the project were a couple hundred thousand dollars, uh, the six thousand probably wouldn't have been a big yeah. debt either. But it's good to close these loose accounts and streamline things. Any other discussion? Or work, work Thomas Wood? Yes. Mayor Manning? Yes. 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 Resolution carries. I'm going to go back to our. Uh, open public hearing on the uh, local law, the peddler's law, and ask one more time if anyone has any comments, questions. And if not, I would seek a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Mr. Brown, that second on the motion to close? Second. Uh, I looked up at the big clock in the wall and it said seven. 
I, I use, when I say here, I usually go by that instead of the watch. Well, came out here for seven and we did three resolutions on it. Oh, uh, well, you got a good point. That clock might be. <laughs> and then you probably took off. Which one? Uh, that you occasionally may have done. That may be. What would you say that was, Tom? Seven ten? Seven five. Seven five. That's what I put to. Okay. I stand corrected. <laughs> And any other discussion? Uh, discussion. Rubble. Yes. 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 So we close now at seven eighteen. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I guess it did. Resolution two twenty five, New York State Retirement System Amendment. Whereas Resolution 09-270 was passed on August 17, 2009 to establish a standard work day for, for hours of elected and appointed officials as well as all civil service employees who are members of the New York State Retirement System. Whereas the Resolution 09-270 was passed, a standard work day was not established for the position of lifeguard and seasonal laborer as those individuals were not members of the retirement system at that time. Therefore, be resolved that the town board is hereby set the following workday standard for elected officials and civil service employees, as so noted. And it is resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the finance manager. I have a motion. So Mr. Wood, second. Second. And Mr. Renner, any discussion? Basically, all we're doing is adding those two positions. Everything else stays the same. To the best of my uh, knowledge, yes. <coughs> so it seems so. Yep. Uh, anything else? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. 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 Resolution carries. Resolution 226, Standard Workday and Reporting <coughs> Resolution. Whereas the controller's regulation 3. 15.4 was passed and became effective on August 12, 2009 as per regulation that is required that the town board adopt a standard work day and the terms and days work per month be reported for each office and position and or position. And whereas the standard work day of reporting resolution should be updated periodically to reflect the changes work hours or newly elected and appointed officials. Therefore, be resolved that the town board is hereby set the standard work day and service credit that will be reported to New York State and local employees' retirement system as attached. And it be further resolved that on passing this resolution shall be posted on the town's website and the official sign board located near the town clerk's office for a minimum of 30 days. And it be further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution and an affidavit of posting be filed with the Office of the State Controller within 45 days of the adoption of such resolution. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the finance manager and to the town clerk. And motion. Second. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Renner, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes, resolution carries. Resolution 227, Twin State Maintenance Renewal Agreement. Whereas the town of Plattsburgh maintains an annual maintenance renewal agreement with Twin State to provide telephone hardware, software, and system support. Whereas Twin State has submitted a renewal agreement to the town for the service from July 16, 2013 to July 7, 2014. And whereas the town board is provided within the general fund of the town of Platteburg 2014 budget for the renewal of its one-year contract with Twin State in the amount of $7,089.84. Whereas the town attorney has approved as a form of a one-year contract submitted by Twin State. Now therefore be resolved that the one-year renewal contract submitted by Twin State be approved and the supervisor is hereby authorized to execute the same <coughs> and then a copy of this resolution to go to the finance manager. I have a motion. So moved. And Mr. Renner, second. Second. Mr. Mannix. A um, couple of things. First of all, in the first whereas, I'd like to strike the word renewal. Um, Mr. Renner, Mr. Mannix, do you have any concerns with that? 
it's a maintenance agreement uh, that we're renewing, we're not renewing, we're renewing the agreement. Okay, no problem. And in the second, whereas the dates uh, obviously are wrong, it should read from August 8, 2014 to August 7, 2015. Gerard Meyer, you okay with that? Mm -hmm. August 7, 8, 8, 14 to 8, 7, 15. Okay. The uh, contract amount, though, is correct. $7,089.84. Any other discussion? Roll Thomas Wood? Uh, yes. Mark Mannix? Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, the resolution passes as amended. Resolution 228, Agricultural and Industrial Fair of Clinton County. Pass. The town clerk has received an application for the fee for <coughs> to conduct and operate a place of public amusement in the town of Foster. The Agricultural and Industrial Fair of Clinton County Incorporated at the Clinton County Fairgrounds. Whereas said applicant received the issuance of a New York State Certificate of Inspection by the Code Enforcement Officer indicating full compliance and that a check for the application fee in the amount of $600 has been submitted to the town court's office. Therefore, it be resolved that after review of the certificate of insurance naming the town of Plattsburgh as an additional insurer, the town court is hereby authorized to issue said license for a period from Monday, July 14th through Sunday, July 20th, 2014. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the finance manager, codes officer, and full insurance. I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Manning, second. Second. Mr. Renadek, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Gerard Renadek? Yes. Bernie Yes, the resolution carries. Resolution. 229 fireworks display permit for Coyote Enterprises Inc. And whereas Coyote Enterprises Incorporated has duly submitted to the town board, town of Plattsburgh, an application for a permit for public display of fireworks on July 15, 2014, to take place at the Clinton County Fairgrounds situated along Road 22 B in the town of Plattsburgh. But whereas the town is not required to collect a fee for the granting of such a permit, Whereas the town board has determined that in lieu of an adequate bond, any amount of $1 million being provided by the applicant a commercial general liability insurance policy in the minimum amount of $1 million for each occurrence and general aggregated covered in the minimum amount of $1 million with the town being named as insured on the policy be acceptable and submitted to the town attorney for his review. And upon the town attorney approving the application for liability insurance coverage as a form, and Clinton County Fairgrounds as a controlling agency of the land in which the public display of fireworks will be held, having also approved and granted said applicant by the town. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to issue a required permit for the public display of fireworks by the applicant on Tuesday, July 7, 2014 at the Clinton County Fairgrounds upon the town attorney approving said applicants as compliance with the conditions and the requirement of section 405.00 of the penal law. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the finance manager, code officer, and co I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Renadek, second. For the purpose of the discussion on the second. Mr. Mannix. Discussion. Uh, question again: Is this uh, been discussed with Cool Insurance? And are they comfortable that this arrangement uh, provides us uh, with the same degree of protection as we would have <coughs> if they had, in fact, secured the bond? I don't think this is any different than what we've normally done. It's the same same thing as we've done in the past. A million dollars with the town named as additional insured. I don't know why that language really persists in the resolution. Okay. Because it implies, in lieu of something, they're doing this. Right. This is what they've done every year. And that's what I would. Yeah. It's pretty mis misleading. Okay. 
Um, I, I'm a little concerned also with the resolve, the Tuesday, July 7. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. doesn't seem to make sense in public Today. accounts. Today is July 7. Today is the 7th, and it's not Tuesday. Right. Uh, I think that's supposed to read the day of the fireworks, um, which is the which 15th. Is the 15th. Does that seem correct, Ricky? We should amend that to read the 15th. Uh, Gerard Murray, you're okay with that? Yes. Yeah. I, have, I have just one more. When is it going to be? Wednesday? No. Uh, July 15th is Tuesday. Tuesday. It's the right day. It's the wrong date. Right. Which is the opening day of the fair. They, they talk in here <coughs> Sunday. Like the previous one, right? In the prior uh, resolution, they talked about uh, that, that the Monday the 14th. The reason that they did that right. is because when the these Ryehoffer shows come, yeah. the, the insurance they, starts the, and they try to put they get on the ground. Yeah. They so got to put all that stuff on. Two days before and two days after the takedown. So we're covered both ways. Yeah. One other thing I've got is that, not for this year, but um, this is one of the few permits that I that I know that we have that we don't collect a fee. I wonder why we wouldn't as long as there's paperwork and there is work in the in the clerk's office to the issue of the permit, why don't we have a fee signed? It's always been that way. I know, but that's, that's, no, reason, that's no reason to <coughs> I bet that that's the answer. We should, we should have a fee it. if for nothing else for the for the time involved in, in issuing the yep, permit. Yep, so I would I would say that we probably want to take a look at that for next year. I think so, in the most recent update um, we uh, indicating the resolution of fees may be amended by resolution. I would assume we could mm -hmm. add this one, or would that require? Mm -hmm. I, I, I take a look if I wouldn't take it. No, we got a year to do it. Yeah. <laughs> we need to put some ticklers in our computers. Well, we, have to we don't want to wait a year because, because it won't happen that well in advance. Pardon me? Well, it probably wouldn't be since it's beginning. Rick, could you time. maybe yeah, go on the web and see if there's a number day. that other communities charge for a fireworks permit to operate. That give us some parameters if it's 25 or 250 or what it is. Okay. No, I, th I think we want to do that rather quickly so it's in place. It would be nice to uh, share that with Coyote uh, Enterprises before they leave this year. Maybe we can at least let him know when he gets his permit that it uh, surfaced. Uh, there was no fee for this and Clearly, there was a lot of work involved by a number of personnel, and there will be one next year. And Ricky said he had to make phone calls uh, to find out, uh, oh. to get a copy of the license this year. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, there seems to have been some... Oh, Ricky started on this two months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We sent letters to Glenn Gillespie, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But uh, we were just talking before <coughs> the meeting, and he said that he made a call to Virginia? Yeah, to, to the... Uh, ATF? A ATF office directly, so, and then they called me back on to it to confirm that all the paperwork, and then she faxed me a, a copy of the up to the license. Rick, do you know how much Coyote charges? Mm -hmm. okay. That would be good to know, too. So maybe you can chase some of that down and give us a recommendation based on what you find, and we, we should act on that very soon. Um, you know, if, even if you pull, <coughs> give us some sort of update next work session. We'll get Debbie to put it in the work session agenda so it stays until we get it done. Because okay. uh, otherwise, history will repeat itself again. Uh, good discussion. Uh, any other discussion? Um, a roll call as amended. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mike Manning? Yes. Dragon? Yes. Yes. Yes, resolution passes. Resolution 230, appointment of Patrick Bowen to the Finance Committee. As the Town Board passed resolution 14 183, authorizing the formation of the Finance Committee to improve accountability and controls over finances and accounts and to play a role, advisory role, to the Town Supervisor, Town Board, and the Finance Manager. And we're asked Mr. Patrick Bowen, as a resident of the town who possesses skills, and experience with finance and finance system is willing to serve as a member of the finance committee. Therefore, we resolve that the town board, town of Patrick, does hereby appoint Mr. Bowen to the finance committee to serve at the pleasure of the town board. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to Mr. Bowen, the finance manager, 
and it be further resolved that he take the oath of office within 30 days of this resolution, and the supervisor send a letter of appointment and appreciation to Mr. Lowell. I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Manick, second. Second. Mr. Renadin, any discussion? Roll Thomas Wood? Yes. Martin Manick? Yes. Brian Renadin? Yes. Bernie Bass? Yes, resolution carries. Resolution 231, appointment of Herb Carpenter to the Finance Committee. Well, the Town Board passed Resolution 14183, authorizing the formation of the Finance Committee to improve accountability and control over finances and accounts. And to an advisory role to the Town Supervisor, Town Board, and Finance Manager. Whereas Mr. Herb Carpenter, a resident of town who possesses skills and experience in finance and financial systems, is willing to serve as a member of the Finance Committee. Therefore, it be resolved that the Town Board does hereby appoint Mr. Carpenter to the Finance Committee for a term to expire 12-31-2019, effective immediately. And it be further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be given to Mr. Carpenter and the Finance Manager. And it be further resolved that they take the oath of office within 30 days of this resolution and the supervisor to send a letter of appointment of appreciation to Mr. Carpenter. A motion. So moved. Mr. Manick, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? Uh, not on this one, but on the previous one, if I could, there's no term of office for that one. Is that going to be an annual appointment? Um, I was grinning as I went through. The reason I did is um, the uh, finance manager is a standing member of that committee. Okay. So as long as he's here, he's at. And or until so the change. Would be, this would be a one-time appointment. The, the one previous one would be a one-time appointment. Right. All right. Thank the you. The others are going to be staggered. Uh, any other discussion? Oracle. Thomas Wood. Yes. Mm -hmm. Martin Manick. Yes. Brian Rendell. Yes. Bernie Bassett. Yes. Resolution is carried, and very pleased to have. Especially Mr. Carpenter uh, on this committee. He certainly does bring a great deal of expertise. He's volunteered to serve on our uh, Board of Ethics as well. He's uh, uh, doing a lot of good things in the community. We yeah, appreciate sure that. Yeah. We do have other members that uh, um, just a, a number of uh, situations have taken place uh, this week, and um, we haven't been able to follow up with uh, other individuals. But I expect uh, our next board meeting will be able to. May fill this rate right out. Resolution 232, adoption of a local law, excuse me, adoption of local law number two of 2014, peddling, soliciting, and transient retail merchants. Whereas resolution 14214 was adopted by the Town of Plattsburgh Town Board to set a public hearing that was to take place in the Town of Plattsburgh Town Hall 151 Maker Road, Plattsburgh, New York, on July 7, 2014, at 7 05 p.m to hear all interested parties on a proposed local law entitled Peddling, Soliciting, and Transit Retail Merchants. Whereas said notice of public hearing was duly advertised in the press Republican, the official newspaper of the town, the plaster, posted on the bulletin board maintained by the town clerk pursuant to town law 30, section 6, and posted on the town of Plaster website for a period not less than five days prior to the public hearing. Whereas pursuant to Part 617 of the Implementing Regulations pertaining to Article 8, State Environmental Quality Review Act, it has been determined that the Town Board that adoption of said proposal local law would not have significant effect upon the environment and could not be processed by any other applicable government agency without further regard to the seeker. And whereas the Town Board, after due deliberation, finds it as an event best interest of the town to adopt said local law. Now therefore, it be resolved that the town, town board of town plans to hereby adopt said local law as a local law number two of 2014 entitled Peddling, Soliciting, and Transit Retail Market. And that a copy of said attached hereto is made part thereof and the town clerk to be there directed and entered into the local law in the minutes of the said meeting and entered into the local law in the Town of Plaster local law book and to be given notice of the adoption of the local law to the Secretary of State. And it be further resolved that this local law shall take effect immediately upon its filing with the office of the Secretary of State. Motion. So moved. Mr. Renner, second. 
Mr. Wood, any discussion? I, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank Mr. Coffey for his patience with us in rewriting this. Uh, <laughs> what, four times? <clears throat> I don't know. Um, I, 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 think, <laughs> I, I think that what we've got is a document that 15 or 20 years from now we're going to take a look at and say that this was this is what we wanted. Uh, how can we, you know, nobody's going to say, how did they miss this or how come this wasn't put in there? This is, uh, it was discussed, it was hashed, it was rewritten so many times that I think we've got a good finish product. Thank you. Good. <clears throat> okay, Ricky, a couple uh, items that you had really honed in and uh, you know, brought the issue of concern with the one particular headwork and hopefully we'll level the playing field for our local uh, brick and mortar stores. So it's uh, good, always good to update. Things change. Any other discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Martin Manning? Yes. Do I that? Yes. Right yes. Resolution carries. <laughs> Resolution 233, on call at MEO 3, temporary position in the highway department. Madam the Supervisor has received a letter dated July 2nd, 2014 from the Highway Superintendent James Wood requesting that due to old staffing and retirement, the Town Board create and fill an on-call temporary MEO3 position in the Highway Department. Whereas Mr. Fred Levine, a former employee who has the skills and training to perform the necessary duty, has agreed to work on a temporary basis to support the department's needs. Now, therefore, be resolved the supervisor is authorized to create a civil service position, a temporary on call position for the highway department, and sign all necessary documents to hire Mr. Fred Levine as a temporary on call employee of the town highway department. And a certified copy of this resolution will be given to the highway superintendent, finance manager, full insurance, and civil service of Clinton County Department of Personnel for the final approval and a copy be placed in Mr. Levine's personal file. And it be further resolved that the town board welcomes Mr. Levine back to the town with appreciation for his willingness to serve in his capacity. A motion. So Mr. Manning, second. So Mr. Wood, any discussion? Um, we do have enough money in the budget because of uh, people that have left and such. Okay. And, and the other thing is, uh, you brought to my attention that there's an updated letter from, from Jim, yes. other than this one here. Is Does the hourly amount stay the same, Bernie, or yes. was he asking for more? No. Okay. Uh, Just basically sti so. stipulating an MEO3 and said, okay. Right. 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 I thought that letter was done, but I don't have any. So there was another change that made from the um, Other than that. Other than the MEO3 in the first whereas in the original there was a typo in the third line. That's it. That's it. So MEO is three. 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 I think it should be clear that uh, this actually is a, is a budgetary savings uh, in addition to solving a, a personnel issue. Uh, it's going to save money in the department, mm -hmm. in the budget. The agenda dumps just 300 numbers. Instead of 330, I see what you're saying. <coughs> uh, I just wanted to make sure yeah. that I hadn't missed something in that the resolution. Yeah. Actually, the right actually, actually you missed 100 resolutions. Whoa, that's the most I've missed, I think. I think I took a nap. <laughs> it's a long one. <laughs> okay, any other discussion? Uh, I do have the updated letter, and it's 
say 1902. Okay. I might have two resolutions on it. A uh, roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. 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 Yes, the resolution carries. That letter was due to be July 2nd. The letter I've got stated July 2nd. Okay, not the best. Resolution 234, Planning Department Monthly Report. The knowledge you receive and place on final report from Phil Von Bargain, Planning and Engineering Department head for the month of July 2000. Have a motion. So moved. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Renadet, Renadet, excuse me, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Mark Renadet? Yes. Yes, resolution carries. Resolution 235, adoption of a breastfeeding policy. Whereas the portion of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, along with amendments to the Fair Labor Standard Act, require that protection for lactation of women be provided and that all employers provide mothers who wish to pump breast milk during working hours with the time and support and appropriate accommodations needed throughout the first three years of their child's life. Therefore, we resolve that the Town of Plattsburgh breastfeeding friendly policy is attached and adopted and made part of the town's official policy books effective immediately. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution and policy be given to the bookkeeper for filing and all department heads for immediate implementation and compliance. I have a motion, please. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Nance, any discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Yes. Yes, resolution carries. That's the business that I have this evening. I'd like to make one note. Um, the absence of uh, Mr. Cashman this evening is a result of death and his family, he's unable to be here. We can appreciate that being noted. Uh, Ken Nolan has it. I just was wondering if uh, it was going to be pursued in terms of the budget. So. I'm waiting for a uh, summary report based on our uh, meetings uh, from our consultant, um, first part of August. Any other discussion? Now, nah, yes, more safe trip. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Make sure you come back safely. <laughs> Make sure I come back. It's the part I'm there. <laughs> Have a motion to so adjourn. Good. Mr. Renovan, second. Second. Thank Mr. Wood, any discussion on the motion to adjourn? If not, roll call, please. Thomas Wood? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Yes. Mark yes. Yes. yes, we will stand adjourned at 745.